Hello friends! As a little pre-Christmas bonus, I have the annual Japan stationery update for you. If you've been around this channel for a year or more, you probably know that it's a bit of my tradition to just like bleep off to Japan and then come back and like the only video I have for you is of me shopping for stationery because um, especially this year I just decided against like traditional vlogging instead I thought I would bring you even more footage of stationery shops than usual because you guys super love that so yeah that's what we're doing today I'm gonna go through all of my footage and edit for like days and days and see if I can make this into a comprehensible packet of stationary goodness. So what is special this time is that I really put an extra effort into trying to find places that we have never been to before. By that I mean you guys and me. I specifically did some research into like standalone independent shops because what we usually do is places that have been around for a long time and kind of became like a chain. Those are also amazing. But yeah, let's start with the smaller ones because they're kind of more special and cute and slightly more charming if you ask me. First up is the Traveler's Factory. As you can tell, if you're a fan of stationery, that's a shop that specializes in the Traveler's Notebook and all the accessories that you get for it. Um, if you're new to this, it's basically kind of like a this sort of format of a notebook kind of based on like a, a vintage style of, of traveling sort of writing good. In Traveler's Factory, you can get all of the covers, you know, made of like proper nice very pleasantly smelling leather, all of the paper fillers, all of the little rubber bands. You can really like personalize the thing. They even had like a special offer for if you're putting together your own first traveler's notebook. They also had quite a lot of vintage stickers. Some of them were actually based on old Czechoslovakian stamps. That was kind of random, but uh, if you go to Japan as a Czech person, you start noticing that from time to time, that like weird um, appreciation of old Czechoslovakian aesthetic. Well, you know, I approve. It's in this really chill residential area in Nakameguro, which, you know, if you're in Tokyo on a weekend, everything else might be super busy, but you kind of like leave the main street and you get lost among these little residential buildings and you find your way to Traveler's Factory and they will make you coffee and it's, it's just such a chill experience. I think that going to Traveler's Factory will really show you like a different side of Tokyo as well. So that's some added value. Now, in the area of kind of like broader Ueno and Asakusa is a place called Kakimoi. Their specialty is kind of like made to order personalized notebooks. So you can go there and you can pick like the cover and the inside and what like lettering you want on the top. And we did not take advantage of that, unfortunately, because this was on our very last day in Japan. So we just bought some of the pre-made stuff, but they do have a really great selection of writing tools and paper stuff and like, you know, independent smaller designer notebooks and sketchbooks. Uh, you could also pick up like a really cute map that they had made for them. Once again, it's in this like a lot like quieter area than the rest of the kind of like touristier Tokyo. So it's just fun to kind of walk around there really.
and around a couple of corners from Kakimori is Empty Lab, which, you know, again, that might ring a bell to you if you're a stationary fan. Empty, the big brand that's behind honestly most of the best washi tapes that uh, you might see even in western shops they literally have walls of washi tapes i think that this store this like little airy boutique washi tape store it's it's a dream like you are just surrounded by washi tapes and that's pretty much all they have but they have them in like all the different colors and sizes they even have like the big ones so you can use them not only to decorate paper but also furniture and such um they also had a couple of limited edition ones and i met a really cute couple there which was literally me and simon but from canada i believe it, it was so cute she just kept going like, oh my god, just like keep me from buying more stuff. And he was like, no, but you love it so much. Like you should treat yourself. And it was adorable. The next indie stationery store I want to tell you about is actually in Osaka. So if you're visiting just Tokyo, unfortunately, you will have to miss out on that one. But if you are in Osaka, you just have to go because there are no excuses. It is just next to Dotonbori, which is that sort of like nightlifey street foodie area where everyone visiting Osaka goes to. It's just super convenient and super adorable. There seems to be quite a big theme of cats running through the whole store. So they do have a lot of art supplies, but also classic kind of like stationery for planning and such. And they also have a lot of gifts. So if you have someone at home who loves cats, you should probably stop by you art. I feel like I haven't really, I feel like this is the first time I'm mentioning the name of this store. Hmm. Thanks, brain. Anyway, yes, U Arts, that's the name of it. Alright, now we're gonna move into the second part of this video, which is gonna mention some stores that are actually a part of a chain. Therefore, it doesn't really matter in which one of the Japanese cities you are, because chances are, if you pop it into Google, you're gonna find your local branch and super easy, super convenient. First one of them is gonna be Tools, which is a place that I heard about before, but I've never been to any. The one we went to was in Yokohama. It was kind of hard to find and in the end, it felt like it's kind of small and it wasn't worth all the time put into trying to find it. But it's actually like super packed with cool stuff. I would say that it's really great if you're looking for like straight up art supplies and it had a really great selection of art books.
Now, to super cool budget options, you probably know that Japan has great 100 yen shops. So, you know, 100 yen is like 90p or like 70 cents. The most popular one is probably Daiso. I would really recommend not going to one of the obvious ones. You know, there's a lot of Daisos and just a lot of 100 yen shops kind of tucked away in like, you know, on like fifth floors of little department stores. Look for those non-obvious ones and you're gonna thank me later because going to like the one in Harajuku on Takeshita Street is a nightmare and you do not want to do it. Like if you just like need to pop in and get yourself some fake eyelashes, then fair enough. But if you actually want to like slow down, have a look at the amazing stationery they have and maybe, you know, spend like 100 quid on, you know, 130 articles of stickers, then you need to find a different one. Let's have a look what they had. Everything for 100 yen. I also visited a can-do in Sapporo, which again was just, there was like not a single other person in there. It was the best for shooting this video. And the selection of stationery they had was really wide, kind of similar to places like Daiso, but not similar enough for me not to add it to this video. So let's check it out. not finish this video without adding some footage from my favorites, which is Loft and Itoya. As you know from my previous videos, Itoya is basically Japan's oldest big stationery store in Ginza. I just never can help myself from going there, you know, every year to check out the new stuff they have. One thing that I can guarantee that you'll find as a new thing in Etoya every single year is the stuff that's connected to the Chinese New Year. This year it was all like mouse themed stuff because it's gonna be a year of the rat or mouse. I think rat. I like rats. Tell me in the comments below if you like rats or if you're scared of them. But they're amazing. They're smart like doggies. The best. So let's have a quick look at what Etoya had to offer it this year.
mentioned before I did not only go to Itoya I also stopped by loft lofts I wish there were more lofts in Tokyo because unfortunately the biggest best ones are always in like the most busy area so like one of my favorite ones is in Shibuya but as I kind of mentioned before all of these areas get really busy especially on weekends or like in the evenings so try to avoid doing that we found a much smaller loft in the area of the UNO station uh, which was actually kind of doable like the queue for paying for your you know um, very necessary stickers and planners and pens was quite long but actually like space wise um, it, it was all right to walk around and take it all in. Loft does a lot of stuff, they do like home goods and they do cosmetics and a lot of gifts as well, but um, yeah, my favorite bit is obviously the stationery. So let's have just a quick 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 look at what's new in Loft this year. Sweet beans. There was all the stationery shops I met during my three-week trip to Japan. Uh, as you can imagine, I did spend quite a lot of money and I bought quite a lot of things. And I do have a haul coming up for you, uh, probably sometime in January. I already shot all of it because some of the stuff, actually quite a lot of the stuff, was presents. So I can't really publish it before Christmas comes because that would spoil the surprise for so many people. Anyway, I hope you are looking forward to that. Let me know in the comments below if anything that you saw in these Japanese stores really caught your eye. What would you buy and which one of the stores looks like uh, the one that you would love to visit the most? Okay, now I'm finally gonna take a break for Christmas and I hope your Christmas turns out super great and you have the best of times and I'm gonna see you soon. Bye!